If you would, uh, both in the room and online, I would like to pray something for you today. And so if you just bow your heads, and uh, if you're online, you can do that at home. You actually don't have to watch me every single second. And uh, let's pray. Uh, Father, uh, the season that we're in has actually maybe not caused as many things as it has revealed. Um, there's a lot of us that um, have a fair amount of loneliness that we struggle with, and it kind of gnaws at the edges of our soul. And that gets amplified right now. And so we'll try a lot of things to quiet that voice that reminds us we are alone. Um, I ask that uh, you would remind us that we are made for something more than various size screens. We're made for connection. We're made for life. And I know it feels like a lot of those connections aren't possible right now. Will you help us to be willing to try new ways to make those connections? And instead of doing something to try to numb the pain or the frustration that we're experiencing, would you help us rather get a clear picture of what it is we hope and long for and find ways to move towards it, even if that requires some level of risk on our part? I ask that you would help us with this in Jesus' name. Amen. Always better. Always better. God's timing is always better. <laughs> Though it never feels like it when we're wrestling with it. Always better doesn't mean always easier. Better means that it improves the quality of something, not just a standard of living, but the quality of your convictions or the quality of your character. And it increases our capacity. Better means you've got more capacity, but not just to enjoy, also to endure, because this is not heaven and there's some stuff we have to carry and work our way through. So if we're going to submit to God's timing, it re will require something of us. And one of those things is it will require a patience. Uh, if, if you have worked as an intern or staff member around here for very long, you've probably heard me say this line, and that is that neither God nor people have ever moved at my pace. So I have to learn to adjust. Since the whole world will not move at the speed I prefer. I just have to adjust. There are times when I want to go faster than everybody else and times when I want to go slower than anybody else. But we have to learn to be patient. We also learn how to trust and have faith because sometimes patience means we have to wait, but sometimes trust and faith means we have to act now when we don't feel ready. Sometimes we need to grow in our persistence and our resolve because things don't always happen as quickly as we would like. And when I say those words, we go, well, I don't know if I want to grow in patience and trust and faith and persistence and resolve, but let me ask you, can you imagine any life absent of those qualities that is worth anything at all? We actually need those qualities for a good life. So when you think about your future, how do you feel about that? Uh, how do you feel about getting older? Like if you're 15, getting older is a really, there's an upside to that. You know, life is about to allow you some options that you haven't had before. When you're 55, hmm, you might have second thoughts about that. So are, how are you looking forward to aging? When you think about more years, do you think of more adventure and more friends? Do you think of more resources and more opportunities? Do you think of deeper relationships and more time with the people you love? Do you find yourself becoming fearful that you might not be able to enjoy a comfort style of living that you had hoped for when you got to a certain age? Are you worried about physical limitations? Do you feel like you're hitting your prime or running out of time? How do you think about your future? And when you think about your future, does something need to change? Some kind of change needed. And if something needs to change, what needs to change? And how do we go about that change? Sometimes we know what to do, 
but we just don't know how to do it. Sometimes we're not even sure what to do. And time plays a factor in the changes we will make. So when you think about the time you have, do you perceive it as an enemy or an ally? Do you, when you think about the time you have, do you perceive it as an enemy or an ally? A lot of times we feel like we don't have enough time to get something done. We might feel like we want to take, or feel like what we want will take too much time to accomplish. Some people are afraid they're running out of time to have kids. Other people are afraid they're running out of time with their kids. Not enough time to achieve, not enough time to get over grief, not enough time takes too long. And so we, we wrestle with this idea of time. Time can be an enemy that acts like a thief and takes what we have earned and takes what we have learned. Time can also be a friend and it can help us in establishing relationships and increasing opportunities. And here's what I want you to see. Time doesn't decide whether it is your enemy or your friend. You do. Time isn't deciding whether it's for you or against you. You get to make that choice. We don't decide how long we will live, but we do get to decide how we will live. And so that's why we're called to be awake and alert and intentional about the time that we have. Don't waste your life by wasting your time. Time management is actually more important than money management. You can make more money. You can't make more time. We all have the same amount of time in a day, and however many days we have in our life, we actually can't do a whole lot to expand that significantly. So this is not just about you need to be more efficient and more productive. It's about learning to be more present and seeing more possibilities. Because when we feel time crunches or time stretches, we lose perspective. We lose perspective. So I know you're wondering, is he ever going to read scripture this morning? And yes, I am. We're going to start with a, a song. Actually, it's a song of Moses. Some people think that all the psalms that were written were written by David, and it's actually a collection. He compiled the book together. So many of those psalms are written by him. Some are written by others. This is one of the songs that was written by Moses, and it, it just kind of it was a, an old traditional that held on for a long time. And what's interesting is that Moses was an individual who thought at one point that he squandered his life, and then he thought he was wasting his life. And he has some wisdom to share with us about that. Psalm 90, beginning in verse 10. Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet, the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. And I know you're thinking, I don't like this song anymore. For they quickly pass and we fly away if only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Listen, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This is a person who's leading tribes of people in a wilderness after he lost everything in a palace and spent a lot of years tending sheep. And now he's on the border of the promised land with a group of people who are really struggling with how long this is taking. Uh, one more passage, Romans chapter 13. It says, and do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think 
about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. I actually looked this passage up in the message translation. I, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but this is how that reads. It's really interesting. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. Must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around or dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed. Get dressed. Don't loiter. Don't linger. Waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. <laughs> Don't you love that? Yeah, I know what you're saying. You should have led with that, Pastor. That was better. How are we going to use our time? When you think about time, if you were going to devote two years to something, what could you accomplish in that two years? What skill could you learn if you were serious about it over a two-year period? How much of a language could you learn if you took it seriously for a couple of years? If you want to be a good cook, do you think you could be a good cook if you put two years in? Maybe you're sitting here and going, I already am a good cook, and it took a lot longer than two years. And other you are going, no, even if I gave two years, it's not going to get better. What kind of job? could you obtain if you took it seriously for two years? What kind of hobby? A reading list. You know, the overwhelming majority of most Americans never read a book past their uh, whatever the latest grade or last grade that they graduate from, whether it's high school or, or college. And, and the wonderful thing about books is you can read the very best thoughts of some really bright people even though you never had the chance to meet them, and yet we don't have time for that. Yeah. You have a way of approaching your life. You have a way of approaching your relationships. You have a way of approaching your money. You have a way of approaching how you learn. We tend to repeat those ways. They're, they're the habits of our life, and this is what God says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways, in all your ways, in the way you approach relationships, in the way you approach your responsibilities, in the way you approach your money management, in the way you approach how you think, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your paths. Maybe for you, some things that are really hard and very difficult and very heavy and bring a lot of sadness to your soul, maybe those things are about to expire. Maybe you are within hours or days of a really heavy load being lifted off of you. That would be worth knowing. Maybe there are some good things that haven't yet begun in your life, but they're about to begin. How can we experience these things? Make the most of the time that you have. Make the most of the time that you have. When we, when we pay attention to time, things work out a little bit better. When we don't pay attention to time, we tend to get more of what we want less of and less of what we want more of. So time will either uh, bring change or time will bring more of the same. So you might be a kind person. Do you want to be more kind? Do you want to be the same amount of kind or less kind? Time's going to play a role in that. Generous or stingy? We have an opportunity to wake up. An opportunity to wake up and use the time that God has given to us. So, we behave differently when we are asleep than when we are awake. I can tell the difference, even from here. Um, I can tell when people are awake and when people are sleeping. Fortunately, most of the time, when they sleep when I'm talking, we haven't had a lot of snorers, because um, that would be a real dead giveaway. Uh, 
there are lots of people who are sleepwalking in life. There's a, they're behaving as though they're asleep. When, when you're asleep, you kind of lose track of time. There's, there's some things you can't do in your sleep. You can't build your character in your sleep. Uh, and character is not built in a moment. It takes time to build character. There's three times that you will lose track of time in your life. Three times. One is when you're sleeping. I, my wife and I are actually quite different about this. But I have a, a clock next to my bed. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, as will happen, I will look over at the clock. And if it is not yet time to get up, internally, I rejoice. Yes! <laughs> I still have two hours to sleep. This is wonderful. And my wife's experience is quite different. Sue will look at the clock and she will go, I only have two hours to sleep and I'm not sleeping, I'm awake. And she's frustrated by that experience. When you're actually sleeping, you can't keep track of time. There's another time you don't keep track of time and that's when you're doing something you love. When you are doing something you're passionate about or you are doing something with someone you're passionate about, the time just seems to fly. You know, just look how quickly it went. It's, it's, it's like, I don't know, where did the day go? We just, it was wonderful. There's, there's another time when we tend to lose track of time and that's when we're avoiding doing a hard thing. And so we'll find something to distract. Social media is the perfect example of this. You can spend an unbelievable amount of time. Well, before I tackle that project, I'm just going to check social media here. Oh, oh, look at that. Wow. And I think I remember their friend. And I'll go check that. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. And the videos and the pictures. And, the, and, the, and then, oh, look at that. All that time has gone by. Well, I can't start that project today. Okay. When we lose track of time, you need to know why. If you're losing track of time because you're doing something you love, you love, that's a really good thing. And when you lose track of time because you're avoiding something that's really hard, that's going to be a challenging thing. And we need to know. Over time, consistency outperforms intensity. You might try real hard once, but that's not the same and won't have the same impact as a person who over time keeps doing something Consistently, It's not just a one-time effort for most things in our life, but it's time after time. If you want to be honest, you can't just be honest one time. You can't just be honest when it's easy. It's time after time after time. If you want to be generous, it can't just be one time. It can be, but that doesn't really make you a generous person. That just means you did a generous thing. Not just once. Not just when it's easy. Time after time after time. Keeping promises. Not just once, time after time after time. Getting healthy, getting healthy. Wouldn't it be great if you could just eat one healthy meal and get healthy? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Just do one exercise and you'd have the body of a titan? No, that's not how it works. Do you know what? We didn't get into the state of dishealth we did with just one bad meal or one day of no exercise. It took years to get a body like this, okay? Um, consistency outperforms intensity over time. So, your life matters. Every voice that says otherwise will try to lull you to sleep and take you off course. And every voice that agrees with you will call you up and call you out when you're off track. We cannot waste our time towards a better life. We cannot waste our time towards a better life. So God has come to awaken us. Awaken us to our potential. Awaken us to the opportunities that are around us. Awaken us to the weaknesses that we struggle with so we can actually do something about it while we still have time. People who take God seriously use time wisely. I'm going to say that again. People who take God seriously use time wisely 
wisely. That's why we're told in Scripture, redeem the time. Make the most of every single opportunity. Time with him. Time with others. Time for learning. Time for serving. We need to take that time. Your life isn't measured just by the number of days. It's also measured by the depth of your soul. We have people who are living a long time in a very shallow life. And no one wants that. But how we manage our time will determine if that's what happens. And this season is something that we need to think about. It's required more from us and taken a lot of things from us. That's true about this whole season with COVID. But what's also true is that hidden within this season have been opportunities that exist right now that were not available before. Um, our Thanksgiving is going to be teeny and tiny. Okay? At this point, a full turkey is not required. A chicken might be too big. A budgie on a stick would probably do it be a tiny little group and it would be so easy just to focus on what I'm not getting to do this year with, with when, when I want to do it and where I want to do it. I can't travel obviously I can't be with these people they can't come over my house this is so frustrating this is so annoying and we're missing what if the opportunity for this year like no other year is to have a really cool intimate special occasion with someone that usually you would have so many plates spinning you wouldn't be able to have that time with them. What if that was a possibility? What if you actually had the possibility to, to think through some thoughts that you, all the natural interruptions of a usual season would keep us from having? How deep could you go in your life right now if you took even 15 minutes and sat and thought about what could be possible in your life or how you could use the time that you have right now. That could be a phenomenal gift, an unbelievable opportunity that you've never had before in your life. And we have it right now. And we thrash about like small children who aren't getting their way when the great gift is sitting right in front of us if we're willing to open our eyes to wake up to the time that we have. The timing of God is always better. Not always what we prefer question I'm asking myself these days or trying to ask myself what is God preparing for us right preparing in us right now that will yield the most unbelievable fruit in the future we can lean into the time that we have and the season we're in let's let's bow our heads this morning Um, I'm, I'm going to do this just a little bit different so just heads bowed, eyes closed will help and then I'm, I'm going to have you do something in just a minute I want you to think about something that you would like to learn more about, get better in Some, something that might improve the quality of your life, the quality of your relationships the, the breadth of your life Um, I'll just throw out some ideas. It doesn't have to be yours. Maybe you always wanted to learn how to play an instrument. Maybe there's a book that you've intended to read, you just don't have the time. Or maybe there's a person known long ago and they now live far away and you just have never had the time to reconnect. Or maybe there's something new to learn. And if you've always wanted to go to Italy, someday you might be able to. 
Wouldn't it be cool if when you got there, you could actually say something in Italian? This is the time, right now, to do something about all of that. Maybe for you, religion has been nothing more than the information that you have learned, the historical accounts of God's interaction with others, but you don't have your own personal story of transformation. What could you do with the time that you have that could make that look a whole lot different? So here's what I want you to do. Now eyes are open. Grab a piece of paper at home, piece of paper or your phone. All right, pull it out, open it up. Yep, it's okay. If the pastor says it's okay to do it in church, it is. <laughs> Just pull it out, open it up. I want you to identify one thing. Start the book. Don't say, I'm going to read the whole book. Just say, I'm going to start the book. Do that. I'm, I'm going to start sketching and drawing. I'm going to start learning an instrument. I'm going to, I'm going to start. I'm going to, I'm going to make a call to a friend. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to put that in your calendar. Right now, take a moment, open your phone, find a time when you are going to do it. And like, don't devote a whole day to it. You'll, you'll get there and you'll, you won't do it. But put some times. I'm going to start this book. I'm going to start this, this learning exercise. I'm going to do something with this time. And put it in. And if you're not a, 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 a technology person for running your calendar, then you've got a way. Jot it down. Put it in so you have time for it. Father, right now, our times are in your hands. Open our eyes, wake us up. We want to be alert to everything you intend for us. In Jesus' name, amen.